Hello and welcome to Make It Happen with Will Polston. I'm Will Polston, this is episode number 144 and in this episode I'm joined by Caleb Swanepoel. Caleb is a South African champion parasurfer, a competitive swimmer and professional speaker. The ocean is a very special place for him and it has changed his life forever. On the 27th of June 2015 at 19 years old he was in a shark attack and lost his right leg above the knee to a great white shark. It's a miracle that he's alive today. Despite the attack, he has since gone on to finish his acting degree, study an entrepreneurship postgraduate degree, and have become heavily involved in para sport representing his country, South Africa, in the para surfing at the World Championships, which is even more impressive given he only learnt to surf after his shark attack. The shark attack completely changed his life forever, both physically and mentally, and he strives to embrace what it means to innovate, adapt, and see the glass as half full, not half empty. Apart from boasting that he can outdrink anyone when it comes to English breakfast tea, he is very passionate about the sustainable drive to protect our oceans and our planet and to motivate others and change the way people and more importantly brands view disability. And in this episode, we're going to be discussing surviving a great white shark attack. So Caleb, welcome to the show. Hey Will, thanks for having me. Very stoked to be here. Thank you. Likewise. So um, we, we need to give a, a, a special mention to my, my good friend, Mo Gordat, because um, Mo, if you're listening, um, it was via uh, Mo's podcast in which we, we connected. And uh, I, I know you heard me on, on Mo's podcast, Slow Mo, and, and reached out via Instagram. And this is the beauty of social media is that we can actually use it to be social, can't we? And, uh, yeah. and, 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 and you reached out and, uh, and yeah, really looking forward to our conversation today. No, definitely. And, and likewise, yeah, I think it's, um, I suppose we be part of a, a global community with, with the likes of Instagram and LinkedIn and podcasts like yourself. Um, and most, most podcasts slow-mo, uh, it was, it was a, it was a slow day in the office. So I popped it on and I was busy getting some, some research out and was really inspired by your conversation and, you know, your, your whole, your whole mission to, you know, inspire a billion people, which is, is a, an awesome feat. Um, and then literally I had a moment of inspiration, went onto Instagram, found you and just DM'd you just to say thank you for what, for your conversation. Um, and you answered right away. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, was blown away and very, very stoked to be here. And yeah, just very humbled. Thank you. No, look, my, my pleasure. I, and, and the reason that you're here is because I, I found you particularly inspiring. So, um, you, for, for, for people that don't know, Caleb, so you, um, th- let's talk about life for you prior to being turning 19 years old. What, what was life like for you? So you're, you're from South Africa. Yeah. Living from, Cape South Town. Af- from South Africa. Um, I was born in Cape Town, but for the early years of my, of my childhood, I grew up in a, in a little area called Prince Albert's in the Karoo and my mom homeschooled us. I've got four siblings. So grew up in the mountains, uh, this semi-arid, almost desert area. Uh, surrounded by farmland and uh, very, 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 very chilled upbringing in terms of, um, you know, the, the schools you went to and the, the kind of facilities we had, it was really, really basic, but that rustic upbringing, I think instilled a lot in, a lot in us. And, you know, my siblings are my best friends today. Uh, my mom's one of my heroes. And uh, yeah, naturally when you, you grow up in a dry area, you try and go to the wet areas to, to cool down. So <laughs> yeah, I've I'm, I'm always been a, always been keen on sports um you know played tennis rugby uh, hockey trail running uh did my own little bit of calisthenics and things like that so always been keen to get outdoors and, and have fun um i see you've also probably had your, your morning workout that side looking like you got a pump on that side there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i, I played a, a bit of sport in, in my uh in, in my still play a little bit of rugby now but uh yeah no it's all, all good so so very active very into to sport um 19 years old um like you say i mean uh when when you've grown up in in sort of the the dry areas you, you head to the wet and um then there was a, a particular day back in 2015 whilst being 19 years old that that things changed for you so so what happened yeah yeah so it definitely was the biggest kind of turning point in my life. I think that when you're a teenager and you're heading into your twenties, there's always a lot going on in your head. Um, you, you're throwing a lot of ideas around you. You're questioning what you're doing and, and the kind of path you've chosen for yourself. And at the time I was studying acting. I was in a theater and performance degree. So, I, you know, I was questioning, you know, am I going to be an actor? I, I'm a huge, huge Jackman fan. So if you ever listen to this one day, um, 
I'm keen to play Logan's son at some point in time. I've got an interesting story about that. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little bit, a little bit later, but um, yeah, I was studying acting at the time and it was, was um, at a beach house in, in Buffalo Bay in Neisner, very close to actually where, where you were um, when you went to the Africa in Plet. And my brothers had just arrived from Cape Town and we decided we're going to go body surfing. So body surfing for, for people that haven't done it before, you don't have a surfboard, you don't have a bodyboard, you just put on a wetsuit and you grab a pair of fins. And we headed out from the beach house into, into the water where we had seen dolphin sightings that whole week. Uh, surfers had been catching waves. It was beautiful conditions. And we headed out quite far to the surf break. And right from, 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 from the beach break, we could see, I could see my mom and my sister, my brother's girlfriend. So all there, we were actually waving to them and catching big waves. You know, it's really a thrilling experience. On, on that note. So just, just quickly. So for, for people that, that are listening, so I know you, you kind of explained it. So body surfing. So it's huge out in, in South Africa. And yeah. even when I lived out there, so for the people that don't know this, Caleb and I were having a conversation beforehand. So I used to live in South Africa about, 15 minutes down from where you're talking about um and in in a place called Plettenberg Bay and it, it's it's basically you imagine surfing people are timing the waves but your body is just dead straight typically we hand that yeah. in front of you and you're riding that wave all the way into the shore and it's it's a really thrilling experience you're not you're not trying to standing up on anything but you're, you're you're literally using the wave to propel you forward yeah and you and you really feel the the energy of the ocean you know you've got yeah. it right flowing underneath you. you 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 really feel like super connected to to the wave you're catching and it was actually my grandfather that uh that taught us how to how to body surf uh he's he's no longer with us but it's a huge shout out to him as well for for getting us out there and getting us into the mountains and getting us into the ocean and yeah so body surfing these big waves and i was slightly ahead of my brothers out to sea scouting for for the biggest wave to catch and as I came over the crest of, of one of the waves, probably the last wave we were going to catch before going in, I saw a, a great white shark on the, on the wave that was forming. And uh, what goes through your mind in that moment when you, I mean, were, were, you, were, you, were you certain it was a great white in that moment? Like, what did you see for you to go, yeah, that's a great white? So, so I, I, I'd seen dolphin sightings that whole week. Um, I'd been in the ocean that whole week and I saw the whole shark. It was, you know, just over three meters on the wave. I've, I've seen sharks, you know, quite a few times throughout my childhood and been to the aquarium quite a few times and watched a lot of films. So, you know, I recognized that it was a great white. And I was going to say that, you know, not a lot goes through your mind when you see something like that in the ocean. You, you almost don't have a thought. I turned towards my brothers. I, I told them there's a shark swim. And we just put our heads down and started swimming towards the beach as fast as we could. But, um, well, I had this feeling in the back of my mind that, that something was going to happen. It was, it was like that, that sixth sense you feel. Um, if someone taller than you stands behind you, if you know it's sunny out, but it's, it's, you know it's going to be a rainy day, that, that, that human condition that we all have that can sense danger or can sense change, my body just told me something's going to happen. And next thing I knew, this thing slammed into me. I felt like I'd, I'd been hit by a, a car and um, I was pulled under the water and I thought, you know, this is it. This is, this is my time. Uh, where's the white light? Where's the, where's stage two? Um, and I remember having a completely out of body experience just, just, just to, you know, um, remind you, I was studying acting at the time. So I, I kind of told myself, you're studying an acting degree. You must be dreaming. You need your legs. You need your arms for this. So, don't worry, you're going to wake up soon. Well, I didn't wake up from a dream. I woke, I woke, you know, I kind of went back into that moment, back under the water, fighting the shark off my leg. I was, I tried to hit it off my leg, but, you know, I, I described it as it, it had this like vice-like grip. And once it locked onto my leg, it was like a bulldog with a ball. It, it shook me around. Its dorsal fin is obviously super, super strong. So it literally ripped my, my entire right leg off above the knee. And I should have had two minutes to bleed out because with an above knee shark attack, your femoral artery gets severed and, and that's you gone. That's, that's, that's tickets for you. So, um, and you know, this, the, the strangest thing was, uh, I think the human, the human body and mind are, are incredible. I felt no pain after the initial bite. So the whole time while I was fighting the shark off my leg, there was no pain. There was just this, this, this thought of this isn't real. This isn't happening to me. And, um, well, 
it was. Here I am today with uh, one less leg, but <laughs> a very interesting story to tell. And, you know, the, the miracle that happened that day, besides for my, you know, my femoral artery actually went into spasm, which saved my life. If it hadn't gone into spasm, I would have bled out, you know, five, two to five minutes and I would have bled out in the water. So my femoral artery went into spasm, the, the bleeding slowed, but then my younger brother, uh, Alex, we call him, we call him Sandy, um, Joshua and Sandy were in the water with me and Sandy saw I wasn't next to him and we both keen swimmers. So he, he turned around, saw what was happening and he actually swam back, back towards me, back to the sky, getting attacked by a shark. And, you know, I've asked him many times, why, why did you do that? And he just said, you don't think. And just like I didn't think when I saw that shark, I warned my brothers, he didn't think he would turn back. He, he got to me and he said, you know, my face was completely, um, completely white. I had lost so much blood. I had these yellow rings on my eyes. I was, you know, my pupils were super dilated. And I said to him, how bad is it? And he looked down, saw, you know, leg is gone. I'm bleeding out. And he said, it's just a scratch. You're going to be fine. Huh. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's laughable because, you know, if he had told me you've lost your leg, I would have probably freaked out. Gone into shock. Yeah, yeah. Gone into shock. I was already in so much shock. My adrenaline was super, super high. And I'm lucky I didn't pass out. And I actually was able to somehow swim next to him back towards the beach. And just before we could stand, I mean, the shark had swam off with my leg already. He stopped us again. My brother stopped us again. And the shark was back circling us. Uh, and it bit into my left leg. So I've got a laceration on my on my left knee. Luckily, so, it can't, it can't, had, so it came back. Oh, wow. Came back. Obviously, I'd be oh. eating something really tasty that week because humans don't actually taste good <laughs> shots. So I don't know what I don't know what, I, what what my mother had made for breakfast, but it obviously tasted really good. And um, you know, my brother my brother then tried to scare the shark off. And when he came out of the water, he had a bite mark out of his fin, so he nearly lost his leg. And oh. I remember, you know, I remember being conscious for this whole period, and I very clearly remember my mother running into the water. And my brother just handing me to my mom. He was carrying me out of the out of the ocean, and he, he just handed me to my mom. And I blanked out. My vision went white. I could hear noises around me. And I woke up on the beach with my family around me, my friends around me, and and the support started coming in from there. So, you know, there's there's obviously a lot of stuff to unpack f f from that point on. But if I'd passed out on the beach, I could have gone into a coma, a coma, or cardiac arrest, or, or bled out. So. You know, I'm so lucky to be here today. And it's, it's conversations like this that really uh, put a lot into perspective for me and just remind me that, well, I'm, I'm so lucky to still be here. I'm really, really just, it's unbelievable that I'm, I'm still here. And, you know, so, <laughs> so thanks so for, what, thanks, you know. I mean, unbelievable. Uh, and, and, and the thing that, but for me, everybody's listening to this and everybody that is listening to this will be like, wow, this is incredible. But I've, I've got to be honest, Caleb, is that, for me, it's it's just that little bit more real because I used to swim in the waters where you were, you know, like I've I, you yeah. you know what it's like. I've 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 been stood on Roberg Beach in Plet, yeah. watching dolphins in the waves. I've watched whales like a, literally a stone's throw away breaching. Um, mm. and I've so I I had two other experience, three other experiences, um one of which I've, I've, I've got a photo of that I, I know how real this is. And for this, for me, this conversation is, whilst it's it's amazing for lots of people listening, it's even more surreal for me. So there's three things that I really remember when when I was there. So in, in Plet, they have, um, or it used to be, I don't know if it's the case, the, what they called the Roberg Express. It was like a resident mm. great white that used to swim in like a, um, like a trench that was down there in the water that was everyone was in. So I used to, learn, used to scuba dive. People always used to talk about this. Um, and then I went in a helicopter once and I saw like a whole school of hammerheads again, like mm. not far out from where like, yeah. it's just so surreal. Um, yeah. And it's, 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 it's so strange because the day before my shark attack, there was a shark attack in plate, right? Where you, you spend lots of time in the ocean and, you know, it could have, it could have been the same shark that, that came, that came looking for, for more people to kind of, um, say hello to, I actually connected with. The, the guy who, who got attacked the day before likely didn't lose any limbs, but he got a big laceration on his glute. So his whole, his whole ass was, was bitten. Um, and, and he's got a lot of jokes about it today. And he's a, it's a really cool guy called, called Dylan. And he came and visited me in hospital. And, you know, you know, I think one, one really amazing thing about this whole experience is that it, it, it reminds you 
about the power of, of community and, and what it means to have a strong community around you and to have people around you that no matter what's happening in your life, um, they're going to be there for you. And my little town, Prince Albert, people from the, the community, I mean, you, you know, Plett and you know, the George area, um, people bought food, they, they came and they bought, they bought, they bought gifts. They came to, people came and said prayers. Um, they brought cards. I've got a whole book that's got a whole lot of messages when people came into hospital. And sometimes I was sleeping, um, you know, I was on morphine and, and completely, completely um, inundated. So just the, the, the power of, of human beings to actually come together um, is, is really inspiring. And yeah, just to, to everyone listening, just it's, it's um, really grateful for every single person, including yourself. You know, it's, this, is part of, this is part of the journey. And, and, and storytelling and sharing this is also a healing thing. You know, if you don't share something that, that, that's kind of changed your life forever, um, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. And I, I describe this whole experience as a rebirth. You know, you have to learn to walk again. And, and mm. in some ways, you learn to you kind of learn to think again because I'd never thought about disability before I lost my leg. You know, I, I, I watched a bit of the para, you know, Paralympics, but that was it. I knew about Bethany Hamilton, but now, I mean, I'm, I'm going, I'm going with another 13 athletes to, to do something incredible later this year and never would have thought I'd be able to do some of the incredible things I've, I've, I've been able to do thus far. And there are challenges, those are always going to be there, but you also have challenges and everyone listening has challenges just, just like myself, you know, we're going to go into some of those in a minute. Cause the, I really want to unpick what, what, what was the, the whole process of what was going through your mind. But I mean, this is a story I don't tell very often, but again, it's, it's why I'm always sat here in, in disbelief. I, I remember, so you, you, you may be aware in, in Plet that, I mean, I don't even know if it's there anymore. I'm sure it is. They used to have something called the wreck, which is in um, what was known as Robber yeah. Gate. And I used to go out and, and go snorkeling. And oh, wow. what, what I used okay. to do, I'd go, I'd go and snorkel the wreck. And this one particular Saturday, I remember going out and I'd literally take my fins and my snorkel and I'd go and I'd look at the wreck and I'd sort of dive down. I didn't need scuba stuff. It was, it was only sort of a couple of meters below um, mm. the, the, the surface of the water. And the, 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 the swell kept moving me around. So I couldn't find this wreck. So I decided, right, I'm going to go out. I'm going to climb up on the cliffs and I can see, work out where the swell's coming in from. So I can sort of position myself so it will take me over the, uh, mm. the, the wreck. And at the time there was this father and son who the son must have been about eight years old and the father teaching him how to surf and they were surfing and then I sort of obviously my head's down in the water and I've sort of come out and I noticed they're on the beach and I was going to ask them um whereabouts is the wreck because I couldn't see it because the water yeah, wasn't super it. clear and when I got within shouting distance they said did you not see that and I said not see what and they said there, there was a shark like swimming next to you that was the site about six foot. So I, I don't, I don't know what it was. I have no idea to this day. I still have no idea, but they said it was literally swimming next to you. And they, that's what they, they told yeah. me. Um, that's so that, that's what I mean. I, I, I can only imagine. So, so let, let's go back to the, 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 did the you, time. Did you go back happened. to the rig? Did I go back? I think I did. Yeah. I, I think I did. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, not, not, gosh. not that, that, that day I didn't like that, that yeah, day. Hell no, I didn't No, Get not up, that yeah. day, but eventually I, I would have done, but, but the, um, the, the, the thing I want to come back to. So what was the moment that you realized that your leg was gone? Cause you said, I, your brother said, it's not that bad. So what was the moment mm. that then you realized actually I. Yeah. So, so it was, it was actually only in hospital. You know, I got put on a surfboard. Uh, they called the National Sea Rescue Institute, who called the chopper. So I was airlifted from the parking lot all the way to to a hospital. Um, you know, a few kilometers down the road. And the, when I first woke up in hospital, I didn't know what had happened. But after um, after a few hours, when they, when they put me into ICU, the intensive care unit, you know, my mom sort of came to to the bed and um, I kind of I kind of knew as well. Like we, we just kind of she just said, you know, um, she calls me she calls me Tiki sometimes. That's my nickname. She said, you know, like, you know, you, you've, you've lost your leg. And I, I kind of already was knew. it your mom that told you your mom was the first person to. Yeah, she just she she was there. And I remember she, she discussed with me, but I I already knew. Um, but it wasn't. A, it wasn't like this huge moment where everything in my mind changed but it's it's almost like from from that moment in the waves in the water when my when my when my leg was taken off my body knew and my mind kind of caught up 
when I woke up in hospital and I was lying in the bed there and I saw this swollen leg and I could still feel my toes, you know, I, right, I, I yeah. just, you know, it was a few hours ago. I just lost my leg. So my brain still could feel a whole leg there, you know, 10 to 14 kilogram leg with half a thigh. So it's this weird kind of combination of your body knowing and your mind knowing, but then you still have this phantom sensation for, for, for a very long period of time where it doesn't feel like you've lost anything, but you look down and, and it's gone. You know, even now, sometimes if it's cold or while I'm speaking, it's like my leg just like gets tingly and I can feel my foot. And that's not a, that's not a lie or any amputee listening to this will know what phantom pain is. And it's a real thing. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's like the body and the mind kind of, we're just kind of connected and just, it, it, it all, it all kind of like a cup overflowing. It kind of just kind of overflowed and I kind of knew in hospital when I woke up and, you know, my legs swell, you know, swelled up dramatically, probably twice the size of my left leg because of the trauma on the leg that, you know, it's not a clean surgical cut that happens. It's a shark attack. So, you know, there's infection, there's a bone sticking out, there's, you know, dead skin. It's, it's quite a gruesome, a gruesome thing to describe. Um, it's not like you've just gone in for a surgery because, you know, you needed to, you needed to get something removed. It's, it's life and death. Unbelievable. So what, what I'm interested to know about is what was your thought process in, in that, that, that from that moment when you woke up, your mum told you, in, but you kind of already knew like what, what was going through your mind about the future about mm. like what were you thinking like am i going to play rugby again am i going and, and mm. how did you deal with that thought process yeah so yo that's a it's a deep question because i just wanted to carry on i was so ready to get out of the hospital bed i wanted to get walking again whatever that was going to mean i didn't quite know if if walking meant crutches if it meant i don't know a running blade i didn't know about prosthetics at all and I just knew in my mind that, you know, this is, this, this is going to be, this is going to change. This is going to be quick. And it wasn't as quick as I was hoping it to be, but I just remember thinking when I was lying in the hospital bed, I want to get out of here. And not because I hated the hospital. It, it was incredible. The support that I got, I knew I, I had a whole life outside of, you know, what just happened to me. And it was almost that drive that I think really helped with, with my recovery. Um, I was only in hospital for, for 10 days so um yeah it's, it's just I, I wanted to carry on and that was it i think that there is the in my opinion is the crux of the fun like from from like the fact that you were like i want to get out of here i just want to crack on whatever on looked like mm. the fact that you had that belief created the possibility of everything else would you would you say that was the case so like just just knowing that you wanted to to, to so you had that level of 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 drive i suppose of look we're gonna just get on with it just do this it just looks like yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna swear but just effort you know just effort and let's go you know kind of thing because i remember the physio came into my room and you know you you start working with the physiotherapist because you've you need to learn how to walk again. You know, uh, it's, it's such a weird feeling having a right leg that's not there. You, you take a step and you fall because there's nothing there. And the physio came into the room and I said to her, cool, like, I want this catheter out. I want to go to the, I want to be able to go to the bathroom by myself. Like, let's go. And she said, hold on, like, slow down. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to sit up. And imagine if you told someone who's about to do a workout, cool, like, we're just going to learn to sit up. Um, it sounds like the most simple thing, but if you've been lying down for two days and you've just lost your leg, it's probably one of the most challenging things that you can that you can do. And I remember sitting up, being completely dizzy, and thinking, "Okay, cool. Don't I must um, def clearly overshot my ambition here." And I put one foot on the ground, and that was such an interesting experience of feeling my right foot there and having this left foot on the ground and going, "Okay." What's the next step? The next step was a granny walker, which let me go to the, the bathroom. And the next step, you know, a few hours, a day later was, was crutches. And I think, you know, you, you make a good point because I, I suppose if I hadn't had that outlook or that mindset, um, I, I probably wouldn't have recovered as quickly and, and moved on as quickly. But, 
you know, I, I definitely wouldn't have, that wouldn't have been possible without that support network. So, uh, you know, one of the things that my mother speaks about, and she gave this acronym to us when we were growing up, IADOY. And it's something I use when I, when I do when I do talks. It all depends on you. You know, I can give you everything that you need to be the perfect athlete, to be the perfect uh, keynote speaker, to be the perfect business person. But if you don't take that opportunity and take those tools and assets and actually do something with them, like nothing's going to happen. So IADOY is one of the things I speak about because I had everything there. You know, I had everything going for me once I lost my leg. And that sounds like a weird way of describing it, but everything that, that needed to be there was there. The support structure, the medical support, the crutches, you know, um, the, the physio. But I had to make the decision to get out of bed in the morning, get out of that hospital bed and and carry on going. And I remember a couple of scenes, uh, my mom getting into the room in the morning, my dad coming in to say hi. And I was busy doing my my workout, which was um, chin-ups with the bar that hung above my bed and tricep dips on the chair. Um, it felt like a hectic workout. I lost 14 kilograms in the hospital, but it was my way of going, okay, you know, you, you, th there's always a way to feel confident. There's always a way to give yourself that, that energy and that feeling that makes you feel capable and able. You know, I wanted to, I talk about my experience being life-changing, but I wanted to be something that enables me rather than disables me because it's very easy to take the other option. And yo, that's a downhill to, I don't know where. Um, and I, I have my days, man. I have my days where everything just feels, there's a word in, in South Africa where you just say, it just feels cuck, you know, it just feels like, like crap. But that's when you can reflect on days where you have made the right decision and you have actually taken that step forward and excuse the pun, but literally put one foot in front of the other. And those are the things that you need to reflect on. You know, David Goggins talks about having a cookie jar, that cookie job, all those little things that, um, that remind you that you are, that you are a strong human being and everyone, everyone has the ability to be a strong human being. You know, we don't all have to be heroes and martyrs the whole time, but we've all done things in our lives that we can be proud of. And I think getting out of that hospital bed is definitely one of the things I'm, I'm proud of. I, I, I can only imagine. And I, I don't doubt that at all. You, 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 you're so optimistic and your energy is infectious, Caleb, in terms of, the, the way you've dealt with it. I know you've you've spoken about it a lot of time and I know you said that speaking about it for you is almost like a form of therapy because you can share your your challenge to make things easier for other people to kind of 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 of, of learning from those lessons which is a hugely hugely admirable uh thing to do what has been the toughest time like what's the moment where you've been at the the lowest you so there's there's two things. I think, you know, the one thing is there's a nostalgia that comes from being someone who wasn't an amputee at birth um, or having a disability at birth to having one, you know, in your early, in your early youth, there's a lot of things I miss and I'll be doing very normal things. I'll be on the beach with my family and someone will pick up a rugby ball and, you know, stop playing touch rugby or i'll be at the house we've just had a cup of tea uh i love tea for anyone who wants to send me a box of tea i'm a tea drinker <laughs> um, but, but you'll be in the house you'll be chilling and then someone will say cool there's 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 soccer at the park at, at 4 p.m you know or you know i'm we're getting up at 5 30 tomorrow guys and we, we're heading for a trail run so there's ways to get that feeling of being part of a team and being part of part of the action there's always a way to tag along but i think really getting involved and missing out sometimes, or I feel like I'm sometimes really missing out on just the normality of life. And that's what this experience is put into perspective, how much we sometimes take for granted. The ability to wake out of bed, wake up out of bed, put on a sweaty pair of running shoes and go for a 5K jog in the rain. That is something that if someone said to me, cool, I'll, 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 you have to wake up at four tomorrow morning and you're only going to have one chance to do this, but you can go for a run in the rain. I would say, Hell yeah, one hundred percent. Give me that opportunity because it's just it's it's the little things in life um, that we really take for granted. So it's it's those that's definitely one of the, the tough things is, is missing out on just the normality of life. Doing a box jump, you know, climbing a tree, um, skipping or going for a run with your son, you know, little things like that. Being able to kick the ball, 
uh, there's ways to the ways ways to get around it. I can still kick a ball, but I'm not going to be able to play rugby against you and you know tip tackle you <laughs> on a muddy rugby field. Um, I can go watch the game. So so that's one of the things. And and I think the other thing is wearing wearing a prosthetic and having having a socket that your leg sits in. There's a lot of moving parts. I don't have a knee joint, so because I don't have a knee joint, I need a mechanical or hydraulic knee joint. And as soon as you attach something to you, okay, I'm a bit of a cyborg, so we can make jokes about that. Maybe I'm going to enter the matrix one day if I let's choose the red pill. But um, you know, there's always challenges with 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 being an amputee because you deal with bruising, you deal with phantom pain, you deal with your your leg actually changing changing size. So if my leg reduces in size, I need a whole new socket, which means that someone has my prosthetist has to go and recast over my leg and make the socket that my leg sits in, which allows me to walk. So, you know, building up to, to going overseas now to, to compete in surfing, and you know, we can touch on that if you want to, but going, going, you know, being able to going overseas has, has, has a whole new challenge that is, that is presented. I've, um, I was at the physio just, just, just a few hours ago, getting treatment on my bruise on my leg, uh, which doesn't want to go away. And it's, it's little frustrations like that when, I've got the little blue flame. It's burning. It's going. It's doing its thing. I've got the energy. I've got the passion to share. I've got the passion to connect with people. But sometimes things slow you down. You know, sometimes, sometimes things slow you down and you can't always do everything you want to do. And that's when it's frustrating. When your mindset's there, you've got the growth mindset, you've got the energy, but you don't always have the V8 engine to get you from A to B. And I'm sure you can relate with, with some of your own challenges that you've been through. but you've got to take a deep breath and go, this is what it means to be a human being. You've mm-hmm. got to just roll the punches. So you, you said there was two things. So one was was in relation to, um, like you say, the, the small things, the being able to go run in, the, the mate calling you up and saying, let's go and play sort of soccer on the beach or whatever. What What's the second thing? That, that the, se- the, second, the, the second thing is just dealing with the challenges of, of being an amputee. Right. Okay. Um, right, right, right. So, 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 yeah, like, like you, know, you say, like the socket, like keeping the leg. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. The socket. Um, I, you call me to go for a workout. We, it's, it's squat day. I can't squat because I've got bruising on my leg. So, right, I'm with you. I yeah. can't join you. So, even, even the, so, the things that I have given myself, the opportunities and the structure I've created, the world I've created to exist in, when that now starts to fall apart because I'm not, I don't have the the tools or I'm, I'm, I'm injured or I'm medical, there's medical issues, but I have all the passion. That's when it's frustrating. So it's, it's missing things in the past and in dealing with kind of this differently able body that has to, you have to be kind to, and I'm someone that's go, go, go. So it can be detrimental. I think that's one thing that, you know, if you heart and I'm hard on myself, you know, I'm hard on myself. So it's about learning to be kind. Um, I have to learn to be kind to myself and going, you know what? Sometimes tomorrow is another day. And, um, you know, I think it was one, it was one of the, the podcasts. I was listening to one of your podcasts and um, I can't remember who he was speaking to, but it, it was about actually setting those small goals. It was a sales, a person who was had worked in sales. And uh, I think it was your latest podcast. And, he, he, you know, you were speaking about, you don't have to have, you can have the big goals, but sometimes those little goals are what allow you to actually feel like you've achieved something in the day. Mm. So this morning, for example, I couldn't go do a hectic workout because of the bruising on my leg and because I'm trying to preserve my body for uh, flying internationally next week. So I did a yoga, a little yoga session for 20 minutes, you know, on YouTube. And I felt like I'd done something. Um, pitching up today and, and having a conversation with you and, and 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 being like okay cool i'm going to be vulnerable i'm going to share that's a huge feather in my cap you know and um it's it's a testament to you for for i suppose making making me, me comfortable and, and and um energized and you've been to South africa so you share the stoke <laughs> but i think it's it's those little things you know it's this conversation will sit with me forever you know not to not to not to bring a tear to your eye but it's the truth this is all, this is the evergreen Absolutely. On on the flip side, um, so I take a very um holistic view in that nothing is created nor destroyed. So 
whilst we can talk about the things that you've missed, um, like the nostalgic moments and the challenges of being able to, to, to deal with being an amputee, what, what do you feel that you've gained as a result wow. of, 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 uh, of, of the, the shark attack? Wow. Um, it's, it's changed. It's changed my life forever. Um, it's given me a, a second chance is the wrong word, but in a way it's a second chance. And it's an, it's a, it's a second chance with a different lens because if you look at the statistics, I shouldn't be here. So every day is a gift. That's the first thing, like every single day. The number of above knee shark attacks that actually survive, you're gone. There's people that get shot in the leg in their femoral artery, they bleed out to death. So every day is a gift. That's the first thing. And the second thing, I've been thrown into this world of differently able bodies, amputees, wheelchair users, blind surfers, uh, athletes that have incredible stories. So, you know, this world of para sports kind of found me after I lost my leg. I couldn't do running and I couldn't do hockey and all these different things. So I found a pool, started competitive swimming, and you now I've represented my province and nationally um, with, with competitive swimming. And now um, I also started getting back into the ocean. And it was a few weeks after I lost my leg that my stitches came out. My mom and dad were like, cool, you're going back to the sea. And all the amputees I'd spoken to, all the shark attack survivors said, get back into the ocean, you know, push back against that fear. Um, so I went back. What, what the- was what was that like? Because obviously, like, yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, a, it's a it's a weird thing. I always joke about it. You know, why does a shark attack survivor go back to the ocean? It's almost like the ocean, not to sound airy fairy, but the ocean kind of it calls you. You know, it's it's a space that heals, and it that's my experience at least. It's something that has brought incredible experiences to my life. Getting back into the sea was was strange. It felt a bit weird. I hopped into the ocean and didn't run into the ocean and I had crutches. So it was was a very weird experience and feeling the salt and sand and sea on this little leg that's very sensitive. And it's also the space of vulnerability. I mean, going onto the beach with no leg is probably one of the toughest things. I have my prosthetic and I walk on the beach, but going into the ocean without my leg on, that's full vulnerability. That's a full send. And everyone obviously looks, you just got to muster up the courage and go, you know what? Hopefully they're thinking good thoughts and not, not, uh, not strange thoughts. And it's more, it's more all, all, all in my own head. So, you know, getting back into the sea has, has been a healing experience for me, but, you know, adaptive surfing found me. And for anyone listening, adaptive surfing is, it's the same as able-bodied surfing, but you're obviously using prosthetics or if you're a blind surfer, you're visually impaired, or if you are, um a quadriplegic you're actually surfing in a prone position and i was very lucky enough to go to the first um south african adaptive surfing champs in south africa and i was invited to to compete and i was on this long board i decided okay let me rise to the challenge and you know since that day surfing has kind of formed part of of my identity in a, in a, in a way and i've also been very privileged enough to connect with this community of surfers and and amputees and and athletes and, and able-bodied coaches you know one of my best friends is tasha mentasti she's a, a you know a south african surfing champion but also started surf therapy in this country and and got me onto a surfboard so so getting back into the sea has been a way for me to kind of have a conversation with myself and go i know there's sharks out there I know, you know, there's, there's danger, but in a way it's, it's taught me and it's given me a new respect for the ocean. And hopefully I can also play my role to help protect sharks. I've, I haven't ever followed so many shark Instagram pages and shark protecting protectors on Instagram and, and, and ocean ambassadors. You know, I've connected with incredible people on, um, on Instagram and social media, and then also the ability to become a speaker. You know, I became a speaker after I lost my leg and, um, I'm still still learning um, how to how to share and tell a story, but went back to my acting degree and, and qualified, and, and you know uh, really wanted to, to to finish that, and it's it's something that really helped me. So you know, without choosing to to without choosing it, I've I've been thrown into this world of incredible stories, incredible people, um, and incredible experience, incredible experiences, and you know, I think it's 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 not fair to say you know would you go back and, and not go into the ocean. 
Um, you know, I think that's a difficult question to answer, but what I can answer is just to say I'm extremely grateful for saying yes. For saying yes to getting out of that hospital bed and saying yes to people asking me certain things and people asking me to, hey, come share. Because by doing that, you're casting a line. You never know what's going to bite. You never know what fish you're going to get. But you you cast your line enough in the ocean. You eventually, it's like it's like waves, right? You sit out in the ocean on your on the back line for long enough. Eventually, a wave's going to come, and you're going to catch it. And you might have the, to quote Bob Iger, you might have the ride of your lifetime. So, you know, um, I'm I'm very grateful for saying yes, and also to bring a bit of humor to what it means to be disabled differently abled you know an amputee um i think it's a point of fascination for so many people and you know my favorite thing is when like a family are walking past and like the six-year-old boy is like hey he's got a robot leg and the parents sort of apologize and i'm like no like hey like let's chat you know this is a robot leg this is how it works <clears throat> and that education is also just incredible so yeah very very grateful for um the people that have come into my life and and the the experiences I've said yes to. I could listen to you all day talk <clears throat> about the. I, I think you're an incredible human being, and I think your attitude is 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 yeah, it's just phenomenal in in the way that you've you've dealt with this process. I think there's a few things that I, I want to talk to. Um, that. I A D O U. It all depends on you. That that element of responsibility. I mean, if you look at the the, the personal development greats, the likes of the Jim Rohns, you know, it, the, it, it's all about having a hundred percent responsibility. And and you talking about that is is huge. The the thing that you said about um like the 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 the, the things that we can be grateful for. So I I talk a lot about um gratitude and i mean literally this this book that i've been making our notes in is something that i most days will write out things that i'm grateful for and i i talk mm. about um belongings the experiences the people the expectations and the privileges like those expectations mm. and those privileges the things that you've said about there that you you probably never once thought about being able to just go and play football on the beach or, or or to go and do that but but you being able to be grateful for and, and find the the gratitude in what you've been able to do since the the incident to being able to do that now and, and like you say the little kid that, that shouts oh it's a robot leg it'd be very <laughs> easy to it'd be very very easy to to get sensitive about it and and but but you're using that as an education tool and and and, and my god to to go on your phone and be watching things about sharks and and uh, my, my dad always <laughs> jokes my, my dad almost certainly won't listen to this i don't know maybe he will he doesn't really uh, to my knowledge he's never listened to any of my podcasts but he always used to joke i used to have a toy toy shark i used to walk around with toy great wife and he always used to joke that i when, when i used to live at home i would always be watching shark documentaries it was like this mm. this this thing but the fact the fact that you you're now being involved to protect sharks i mean it would have been very easy for you to have gone the complete other way and tried to make the things mm. extinct but you've you've yeah it's just yeah it's 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 weird how yeah and yeah thank you for for reminding me about those things because sometimes you know sometimes you forget and and i think that's that's part of being a human being as well i think you know a beautiful thing i i listened to recently is it was with um aubrey marcus and he was speaking about just the human cycle and, and what happens and how things work but you know you're born with love and then there's fear and it's this journey of finding love again and you know i don't mean love as in finding a relationship necessarily but it's it's this beautiful arc because you, you you enter the world with with all this love and then you kind of get exposed to all these different things and all these fears get put into your brain and you you, you actually build all these little walls around you that block you from actually loving what the universe has kind of put in front of us it's a miracle that we are here today that we've a connected but b that you were born and i was born and we kind of never never thought we'd find each other so you know for me the ocean is a scary place. It's got things that are scary. It's got sharks and 
uh, <laughs> I've come very close to meeting one. I've met one, and I still need to give my shark a name. I've given my leg a name, and we can I can tell you about that. But but this idea of of pushing back into that fear, and that fear actually becoming something that can enable you and help and heal you, and <clears throat> I think if I if I hadn't gone back into the ocean, I I wouldn't I wouldn't have. And by going back into the ocean, it opened the floodgates to 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 incredible things and allows me to share that with other people to hopefully change the way they see things. You know, they go, you're crazy for going back to the sea. You know, you survived a shark attack. Like, oh, haven't you had enough? And I go, well, that's the space where I can go and unwind. That's a space where time stands still, you know. And when you're on a wave, as much as I don't surf as well as Kay Slater, I feel like Kay Slater on that wave, you know. Um, I might not be getting barreled by, by a 10-foot wave, but my little three to four foot wave with my little adaptive surfboard and my surf leg, I am Kelly Slater on that wave and I'm having the ride of my lifetime and everything stands still. And it's, it's those moments, those are the little, the little golden nuggets, the little veins in the mountain that you can only get if you say yes to say yes to things. And it's, it's again, brings it back to that acronym. It all depends on you. You know, you've got two legs. If you listen to this thing you do, if you do have two legs, be grateful for them. Uh, put those running shoes on and go for that run, you know, and actually feel feel your feet hitting the ground. I was telling my friend the other day, when you walk in the sand again, be grateful, bro, because I only feel one foot. And I'm grateful for having one foot in the sand, you know. Um, I've got friends in wheelchairs who are in, extremely inspirational and encourage me to to do the things that I do. And it's so it's all about perspective. You know, you look at yourself and you go, you know, um, oh, I can't believe I'm taking my life for granted. I look at myself and go, well, you know, I need to get out there and do my thing because my friend's in a wheelchair doing pull-ups here, you know. Um, <clears throat> so it's this beautiful cycle of, by, by choosing, by choosing the, by saying yes to things, um, you, 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 it's still tough, but, but I think you get exposed to incredible things. You get exposed to incredible little things. Cup of tea with, with the family on the mountain, you know, a walk in the rain. Don't no, don't take it for granted. For sure. So two two questions. Um, so to, to maybe look at finishing up. Um one, <clears throat> I've I've got to ask the question. When when you go into the sea now, do are you fearful? Like, do, does the thought regularly or if at all ever come through your mind, like, is there a shark near me? Like, does that how does that what happens yeah, there? Yeah, definitely. Um I was I was actually yeah out practicing the other day and the seal popped up next to me and I like freaked out. So I like, jumped up my board and I'm like, well, you know, what, what's that? And it's just a seal busy frolicking and playing around. So I definitely still, still have those thoughts out there. I mean, I've had, I've had, it's weird. I've had times before where I've felt uneasy and I've actually paddled in and the shark siren has actually gone off and, you know, they call everyone into the, into the, onto the beach. Um, Musenberg's a very popular kind of, place to learn to surf in Cape Town uh, for whoever comes and visits and you know they, they do have shark sightings there at times and you'll be on the back line and I just had that sixth sense I said to my friend I don't feel comfortable I went in and the shark sign went off and you know maybe that was just luck but but I definitely lean into those feelings and sometimes you know I've started free diving now with a friend of mine which is even more kind of scary um and we're telling her we're doing building making a little documentary about it which is which can be very exciting i'll share with you um going down with just a fin again and you know doing similar similar things to what you're doing like exploring a wreck or exploring the cult you feel very vulnerable uh, and and that's when you that's when leaning into that fear is important because if you are safe and you're with someone who knows what they're doing you can actually start to look at that fear and go okay cool what what is this fear so you can actually have a little mental workshop with yourself uh it sounds quite crazy but my friend grabbed me the other day and he said you safe i want you to think about what you've experienced just know that you're okay and you're with me it's going to be fine and it just allowed me to go i wasn't expecting to hear that but in a way i went there and started thinking about my my experience thinking about what, what has happened to me and it builds this new muscle. It builds this new intangible thing that, that is not fear. It sits alongside fear. It's the membrane that sits between, well, 
I'm making this up now, but it's the membrane that kind of sits between fear and, and happiness, you know, or fear and bravery. It allows you to cross from fear into bravery. And it's it's like a little channel that you can you can just it's actually quite peaceful. So for if that makes sense to anyone, if it makes sense to you, um it's it's something I'm I definitely want to keep leaning into. But hey, I'm still scared of sharks, man, but I'm not gonna stop going into the sea. Amazing. So Caleb, what, what's the future look like? Like what 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 does the, the dream look like for you? What what do you plan on be doing and and yeah? Yeah, so um I think adaptive sport has really changed my outlook on life tremendously. Not necessarily to be the world's best competitive athlete, but it's given me an opportunity to realize how important it is to keep moving, uh, to stay healthy and to find new ways of of being out there and existing in the world so you know it's not running now it's surfing and swimming so i think c- connecting with people and becoming a storyteller is something that i'm really kind of trying to build my trying to lay the books on the road for um being able to change the way people see disability you know and change the way people see it sometimes and brand specifically as maybe not as this asset um they might see it as you know something like we have to to bring this into to connect to a specific audience, but I want to show people how empowering it is to actually have had this experience uh, to be walking differently and being differently able, but to share that message with the world. And uh, I definitely want to write a book one day. Um, I still think I'm a bit young, but someone told me if you're old enough to tell your story, you're old enough to write a book. So definitely want to write a book um, and 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 do more speaking and build up my speaking career. And you know, I'm, I'm also interested in in, in business. I, I listen to a lot of business podcasts. Um, I'm working currently in the fintech space, so to learn to learn the fundamentals of of actually starting something and and, and seeing it grow. And if one day I can have a platform where I can can help inspire people and encourage others, um, I think you know, I don't know if that's going to be the end of my career, but hopefully it's a start to an exciting one. Amazing. And as we are recording this now um this is november 2022 so anybody that's listening to this um in the future just to give it a bit of context you've got something quite exciting happening next month yeah so quite crazy shark attack survivor goes back into the ocean and becomes a a, a South african champion para surfer <laughs> it's a very strange narrative but i've been selected to represent my country at the world para surfing championships in in the united states so i'm actually leaving in a few days to 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 the us and um yeah people can get involved they can head to my instagram um just they can go to caleb swanapool and they're you know busy busy raising funds to 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 get us get the team across to the states and um yeah everyone's self-funded going that's just how it is at the moment but uh really an exciting opportunity to to represent my country um to challenge myself it's an, an exciting opportunity and goal and to meet other athletes you know when you go over there you, you you're with a group of people that have all experienced something different you get to to see what they're doing what they're building um and then again to to wave our South african flag high and proud um it's not every day that i mean i never thought growing up i'd represent my country on an international stage it just it never occurred to me and the opportunity has has presented itself and i'm, I'm taking it with with both arms and one leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's that's another thing that this is giving you. It's now giving you the opportunity to represent your country in 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 a sport. You're a sporty guy, and to be able to do that uh, on on a national stage is 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 another thing that it's giving you to be able to do. Definitely, and also just you know, it's 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 reminded me how important it is to stay active. You don't have to be a pro, pro athlete, but just like you mentioned in your previous in your previous podcast episode, it's those little goals, those little things you can keep ticking off. Um, you know, Atomic Habits, James Clear speaks about if you do a workout, you're an athlete. So, you know, take yourself seriously. You don't have to be Usain Bolt, but I don't get into the ocean and go, oh, I'm learning to surf. I go, I'm an athlete, I'm a surfer. You know, mm-hmm. if you get on, if you do something once, just know that it's a, it's a, it's a vote for the person that you that that you want to become so that's also something i I hope to just instill in other people is just push back against that fear you never know what's going to happen and just try something just just say yes to it um like yeah i guess look look where i am today and 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 uh, yeah just grateful just really grateful amazing caleb it's been amazing speaking with you and uh i've really enjoyed our conversation so thank you so much for being a guest if people want to find out 
more about you, connect with you. Where can they find you? How can they do that? Yeah, so I spend a lot of time on on Instagram and and LinkedIn. Uh, the best way is just to to search Caleb Swanepoel. Uh, you'll see a little shark in my profile, and hopefully a couple of pictures of someone with one leg, and that'll be me. Um, so reach out and connect there. I share you know the adventures I go on, um, the motivation I'm trying to spread, and uh, if people want to get involved and support, they they can they can they can look at those links. And also just will thank you, man. Uh, this is it's a privilege to be here and to connect with your audience. Um, I think you've got a really awesome community that you're building and uh, yeah, hopefully I can cast the votes to, to inspiring um, your mission to, to get 1 billion people uh, doing some awesome things and yeah, just really grateful and humbled. Thank you. No, my pleasure. And and I'm going to add to this, you've not asked me to do this, but I'm going to say it. So if anybody's listening um, in November and um, they, they they can see these, you can head to Caleb's. Um, in fact, no, do you know, we'll put it in the show note. There, there's a link, like you said, it's self-funded this particular world championship for you to represent um, South Africa over it at the world um, para surfing um, championships in California. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get the link on to put my team to put oh, the, thank you. the link in the show notes. So people want to support you if you can, if you've enjoyed this guys, then, then, then give, um, what you can to Caleb. If it's not, um, if, if you, you're in a position to be able to give financially, give financially. If you can't give financially and you've enjoyed this show, share this episode, put it out on your socials. Um, I, I think it's been a fantastic episode. I've, I've really enjoyed it. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Will. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Cheers. Until next time, guys, make it happen. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. Make sure you join Will's free Facebook group, the Make It Happen community. Please support the show by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Share this episode with at least one friend you think would benefit from it and give Will a five-star review wherever you download your podcasts. Until next time, make it happen.